Good afternoon, Pokemon players, and welcome to the fourth annual Nugget Bridge Major Finals. My name is Dewey, and joining me on the mic today is going to be my good friend, Alex Aglose. Alex, how's it going today? Oh, man, today is a fantastic day, Dewey. Oh, man. Yeah, you excited <laughs> to watch some top-notch Pokemon battles? What? Oh, God, this, this match is going to be so freaking hype. This is the culmination of... The largest unofficial online tournament of the year. How many players were there in this tournament again? 1,327 players and 1,325 players uh, later. We have two of our finals right now. Major Bowman versus Juan Carlos Mateos de Lamo, also known as Electro. Uh, Gosh, I mean, both these, players, they've gone through a, both these players, they've gone through a pretty intense uh, top cut just to get here. I mean, uh, running running down the list of people that they've had to play, Bowman's had to play, Dingram, Lottie, Lahu, Pedons, and a couple more players that are also top-notch in Electro. He had to go through uh, Jack of Clubs 97, Findo, Junio, Toquil, and Dark Penguin 67. I mean, those are difficult players to get through. What you were saying to me earlier, though, they both came out of that death division, right? A division in the tournament? Uh, B division, that's right. Uh, it was a very heavily stacked division. Uh, both these players... Finish seven and two in in Swiss and uh, ended up the fiftieth and the seventy second seed. So I mean, these players, even though they were kind of lowly seeded, you know, they they came out on top. You know, they're here right now, ready to play off for three hundred dollars or one hundred fifty dollars in prizes, along with Nugget Bridge circuit points as well. So that's that's huge. So Electro will be on top, and Jake Major Bowman will be on bottom. Correct. Uh, that is correct. Um, you know, both these players, uh, I'm excited to see what both these players can, can, can do. I know that Electro and Bowman, they're both, uh, they're both relatively new to, to competitive, uh, this, this, uh, this format, you know, the competitive doubles. And, you know, it's just going to show how far these players have gone. Are we getting ready to start, or are we going to wait a little bit? Do you know? Uh, I think we're pretty much ready to start right now, ready to go into Team Preview. Both these players are probably excited to start. Uh, probably a little bit nerve-wracking. I mean, this is the finals of probably the biggest tournament, like you mentioned earlier, right? Yeah, with cash prizes. Woo! Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've given away over $700 total in cash prizes, and it looks like these players are getting ready to get started. I mean, uh, into Team Preview right now, Bowman going to be off-screen with Breloom, Togekiss, Thunderous Incarnate, Heatran, Kangaskhan, and Lander's Therian. Uh, Electro on top going to be running Salamence, Bisharp, Breloom, Lander Therian, Suicune, and Heat Rotom. What do you think about these teams so far? Oh man, my stream's lagging a little bit. Um, what I really like here, the Devil Intimidate from Lectro, I actually think that's a really strong play in this format. Uh, he's also got the Bisharp for Defiant, so he can stop um, Jake's own Landorus, Tease, Intimidate. What I thought was interesting about Bowman's team, the Thunderous Eye, you see that a lot of times, you know, scarfed to try to take out uh, opposing Landorus T. So it's going to be interesting to see whether he's going to he's going to opt to go for that. It's kind of a really, I don't know, it, it's almost the most common item I think you see on Landris Eye right now. So a lot of people can play around it if you're ready for it. But it, it does a lot of work to Electro's team. I mean, the HP Ice on the Salamence, that's going to do ma massive damage. You can HP Ice the Breloom, you can Thunderbolt the Suicune, and you can get rid of the, presumably, the Scarf Landris on Electro's team, um, all, all just off, off of turn one. So I think that's going to be... Uh, it's going to be a big threat. I, I, I think we'll see it played a lot. Uh, both teams are running Breloom, which is uh, <laughs> going be, to gonna be quite interesting. We might see a lot of things going to sleep here. But um, it's looking like it's going to be a pretty good battle. It really is. Absolutely. And that Thunderous Incarnate that you mentioned earlier, you know, uh, Breloom can be problematic because it can put things to sleep. And, you know, Thunderous Incarnate has that priority taunt, which might come in handy a lot to prevent uh, Jake's team from really just falling asleep on him, right? Oh, my bad. I wrote down Thunderous T. My bad. Yeah, it's Thunderous I. <laughs> Scratch what I was saying. I don't know what I'm talking about. But Double Genie, Both Double Genie, right I think, in this, yeah, go ahead. Both players right now going to turn zero. Uh, Jake going to go ahead and lead Thunderous Incarnate, which you mentioned, and Kangaskhan. Electro on the other side going to go ahead and lead uh, Heat Rotom and Landers uh, Therian. Wow, wait, why is yours so much ahead of mine? Oh, okay, okay. Try I, see it, I see it now. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah, we're good. Ooh, that Kangaskhan Thunderous. Ooh. So there's there's one of those Intimidates we were just talking about. Um, so Landorus is immediately going to try to nerf this Kangaskhan here, and it's going to threaten the, the Thunderous Incarnate pretty pretty heavily. 
Although, you know, without something like Stone Edge, it's, he's going to have to risk getting HP iced back depending on what, um, you know, Bowman's running himself. Yeah, the Rotom Heat also... Uh, he, go ahead. Heat Rotom is one of those Pokemon that kind of checks Thunderous Incarnate as well. Uh, uh, I used to use it a lot as a Thunderous Incarnate check, and it definitely works. I mean, it resists anything that Thunderous Incarnate really can throw at it. I think what Electro's done really well here is he's immediately put a ton of pressure on that Kangaskhan. It's already at minus one. You have the potential Will-O-Wisp this turn from the Rotom. You have the potential Superpower, but uh, he's going to really have to be careful about that Thunderous Eye trying to HP ice it. I think that's, that's the one play that Bowman's got right here. I mean, Kangaskhan uh, at minus one with the potential burn. I'm not sure if he's running Fake out here, but it's going to be... It's going to be kind of scary um, to just leave that out here for this turn. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe we see a switch or he might just try to just take the superpower. I don't know, depending on how bulky it is. Yeah, um, we do see uh, Jake's Kangaskhan going to go mega, so it's going to stay in here. depends on if it's going to decide to fake out. I mean, if it does fake out, Lander's Theory is a pretty obvious choice. Uh, does go for a fake out here, going to target down the Lander's Theory and does try to prevent it from making a move this turn. Does a pretty decent amount of damage to it as Thunderous Incarnate goes for the taunt onto the Heat Room, going to try to prevent any sort of Willow is coming out. And we do see Rotoms go straight for the Thunderbolt, targeting down that Thunderous Incarnate. So Electro bypassing the taunt, maybe predicting it, maybe it doesn't have Willow, so we don't know. Uh, pretty decent turn right there for both players. Oh man, yeah, my stream is still way behind you. Jeez, I'm refreshing again. Uh, so okay. we do see. We do see the Rotom, uh, the Heat Rotom bypass the Taunt. Uh, we're not sure if it has will or not. Uh, I'd say it probably does, and Electro just made a good play right there to avoid getting taunted. Yeah, that, that Taunt was really essential. The, the Fake Out and the Taunt there really keeps the Kangaskhan as healthy as possible. And um, in, in, a, in fighting position for later in this battle, he's able to switch it back out if he really needs to. Uh, I, I think I fixed the stream, so we should be pretty good here. I mean, not a whole lot of damage was dealt here, but... Um, the fact that he fired off the Thunderbolt meant he, he, he pretty much saw that taunt was coming. Right, absolutely. Even though he may have done more damage, you know, it's really just preventative measure right there from Jake. So it's still a good play from Jake, even though, you know, in that turn, the damage rolls went not in his favor and went for Electro's favor instead. But it's still it's only turn two right now, so it's still anything can happen. Something that uh, hasn't really occurred, though, is a change of pace. Oh, we're going to start. Okay, we'll go ahead here. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay, well, the lander's going out to Suicune here, and this is what I'm talking about. There wasn't really, like, a huge switch of positioning on that first turn. It kind of was just like a, okay, let's just, let's get a feel on what's going on. The Kangaskhan is going to elect to stay in here and just return that lander is slot. Um, I guess he's no longer fearing that potential Will-O-Wisp because of the taunt earlier, but I guess he didn't really care about the superpower either, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, we do see Suicune make a pretty good switch. Uh, gonna take that Hidden Power Eye. It's gonna take that return very well, too. Suicune's one of those uh, more bulky Pokemon that really has grown in popularity this season, uh, more so than other seasons, as we do see Heat Rune target down that Kangaskhan with a Thunderbolt instead, probably hoping for a little bit of paralysis to happen. So, uh, a little bit of uh, momentum shifting right now, like you said, that's gonna be important. Switching in this... Suicune into the face of this road or this Thunder Race is gonna be a little bit sketch though. He's gotta he's gonna have to I, I don't know. A lot of them are built very physically bulky, so <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I mean a lot of Thunderous are also not very specially offensive here, but I don't think the Suicune's gonna wanna take this Thunderbolt. It, it's almost like unless he's gonna sack it for the tailwind and leave Rotom up, but Rotom having been taunted is losing a lot of its pressure by not being able to fire off this Will O Wisp on the Kangaskhan. I'm liking right, and we Bowman's see how much damage right that now. did. We see how much damage that uh, that return did. You want to say that that Suicune's trained to be physically bulky instead, especially bulky. So I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see it get knocked out to a Thunderous Incarnate Thunderbolt, uh, barring a Wakan Berry, uh, or depending on just how it's trained itself. But uh, might see might see Juan try to switch out this turn too from that Suicune, try to get back some momentum. Uh. We yeah, do well, see I mean Kangas. <laughs> We do see Suicune oh, stay in, so Kangaskhan going for the power punch. Now it's at plus one after that Landers there and Intimidate at uh, at turn zero during the leads as Suicune does eat its Citrus Berry, going to heal back to about 75% of its health, and Thunder is going to go straight for the Thunderbolt targeting that Suicune. It should survive thanks to that Citrus Berry. It does hang on, does get paralyzed. Unfortunate right there for, for Juan, 
but Suicune itself is not really a speed Pokemon, as Heat Run goes for a Thunderbolt onto the Thunderous Incarnate, going to activate its Citrus Berry as well, uh, going to bring it back to about 50 or 60% of its health, as Suicune goes for the Ice Beam, going to target down this uh, Thunderous here, is it going to be enough to knock it out, isn't going to be enough to knock it out, and Thunderous hangs on as the Taunt wears off on Rotom. Uh, a lot of things here I actually really liked. Uh, what this says to me, the focus on this land, or the, th the Thunderous, but uh, Electro's, he, we've seen the Landorus T, he's probably brought the Salamence, right? He's really scared of that HP ice. He really is trying to get rid of it um, in order to just kind of bring out Salamence later and um, intimidate the field and kind of just try to take the, the rest of the match from, from there. And I think that speaks to why he switched in the Suicune. Uh, unfortunate with the Paralysis, but a great play from Bowman on that power-up punch, understanding that really nothing on this field was threatening him that turn because the Taunt was still on the Rotom. Now that the Taunt has come off the Rotom, it might be a different story. He might have to retaunt it again, but if he does that, he may be, you know, leaving himself to, um, open to losing his Thunderous because of the Thunderbolt from the Rotom coming if he expects the taunt coming back. So I think a lot, a lot actually happened in that turn, and it speaks to what Electro's got in the back. Right. Uh, of course, Kangaskhan at plus one right now. You know, Landris Theron coming back in, that's just going to bring it down to plus zero. So Suicune was a good switch in for, for Juan. Definitely, uh, could definitely trade this uh, Suicune for this Thunderous. Maybe he realized that he doesn't need Suicune that much anymore coming in. Maybe. Like I was mentioning earlier, even though I was confused about the, the, the form of the Thunderous, the Thunderous is providing a huge threat to Electro's team. It's, it's completely, it's checking so much of what, uh, 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 Bowman's checking it, so much of what Electro's got with that Thunderous slot. So I'm really liking its positioning here. I would expect to see it in the next couple matches if we go to a, a even three matches. Right, and we do see Heat Rotom protect itself as Landers Theron comes in for Jake's side. Uh, Kangaskhan going to go ahead and target down at Suicune with a plus one return. Going to be able to pick up the knockout after just one hit. So, uh, <sighs> saving that Thunderous Incarnate, that's going to be huge, but uh, coming back to it, if that Landers Therian on Juan's side is scarfed, that uh, that Thunderous Incarnate should be knocked out regardless uh, before it can go for that Hidden Power Ice. Yeah, well, that's assuming it's scarfed, right? Maybe he's running some kind of weird, weird, careful set. <laughs> there is the Salamence, and this is what I was saying, that HP Ice is such a massive threat. Between the HP Ice and the Thunderbolt, that Thunderous is doing so much work. Um, but we do have a plus one Kangaskhan on this side of the field too for Bowman, right? Plus one? No, well, I it guess is now currently it's back to being neutral. It's, it's, it's back neutral. to being normal, right? Right. So, we'll see. We haven't seen all of all four of Bowman's Pokemon uh, in the back. He still has potentially a Breloom, Togekiss, or a Heatran, and um, taking out that Salamence is going to be the big. That's going to be the big challenge right now, especially because Kangaskhan's taking a little bit of chip damage. If he takes a big double edge or something. Uh, it's gonna, that's gonna be bad. That's gonna be bad. Right, and we see the position of uh, switching really just making a difference here. Uh, Landers Aaron came in during the turn, Salamence came in in between turns, Salamence comes in fresh as he does get the Intimidate off on both Kangaskhan and Landers Therian. That is huge. That is, that is pretty much a sink of momentum right there for Jake, I think. Uh, we see Heat Room gonna go ahead and retreat this turn, does not want to stay in against the Kangaskhan or that Landers Therian. Gonna go back into Landers Therian himself, uh, that's going to go for another Intimidate, now Landis Staring at minus 2, now Kangaskhan at minus 1, so, uh, I mean, a lot of work's been done just from having two Pokemon come in, as we do see Salamence go Mega here, of course, that is his only possible Mega option, just like how Jake's really only Mega option is Kangaskhan, that's already been Mega. Uh, we do see uh, Landis Staring from Jake's side go for the Rock side, so it is going to be Choice Scarfed, considering it outsped the... Uh, uh, the Salamence, and we see Kangaskhan go for going for the return, going to target down that Landersarian on Juan's side. So that means that that Landersarian is not going to be. Uh, oh wait, it hasn't moved. That's right, it's a switch. Uh, we do see Salamence flinch, and that is unfortunate right there for for Juan. You know, a lot of times you see Mega Salamence not attack on the first turn, electing to protect to go for that speed boost. I think Electro knows that, and he went for the attack. Um, Bowman also, I think, anticipated that protect, and that's why he didn't target the Salamence. That would have been a great, great, great play if he did not flinch. It's really, really unfortunate. But uh, in, in, on the other side of things, that double intimidate is so powerful. It's so powerful. Um, just being able to nerf this Kangaskhan and the Landorus. I mean, nothing on Electro's side has been intimidated. He sent them both things after Bowman sent in his th Thunderous or his Landorus. But that Salamence turn right there was great minus that unfortunate flinch. Like, that's really unfortunate right here. He really needed that to 
pretty much pull some momentum back. He's about to be down two to four. Yeah, and we see how much damage that Rockslide did that Mega Salamence at minus two. I mean, that's like chipping it with like a couple turns of Sandstorm. That's it. That Salamence is bulky, and we see how much that Intimidate definitely pays off. Uh, right now, this Salamence will be able to move before that Kangaskhan, barring a Sucker Punch. Uh, not sure if a double edge from that Salamence will be able to pick up that Kangaskhan. You probably know the Calx a little bit better than I do. Um, you know, on my Kangaskhan, it'll knock it out, but I don't run any bulk. So, I, you know, if I were him, a rock slide double edge is definitely going to get rid of this thing. The thing is, is Message Man, is Bowman's Landorus going to go first? Is it going to win the speed tie? And is it going to flinch? You know, it's, it's, <laughs> flinching is, it, it could really turn around whatever's going on right here. And we do see the switch going to go into Jake's last Pokemon. It is going to be the Breloom, and that is not something that you want to see. Uh, Breloom is a very difficult Pokemon to deal with, as we see Landorusarian on Juan's side. Also going to go ahead and switch out back into the Heat Rotom. Uh, Kangaskhan going to go for the second punch. going to fail as Salamence does get off its double edge. Where's it going to go? Targeting Stanley. Kangaskhan does pick up the knockout. Uh, there it that is. That could be a good thing. That could be a bad thing, because now Landorusarian could just come back in and intimidate uh, Land or Salamence. Oh man, switching in Breloom into a potential Hyper Voice, that's got, woo, woo, it might be, it might be Sash, he might have been trying to sack it there, um, is the Breloom going to help him in this position? I mean, he's looking at a, he's looking at a Mega Salamence and a Rotom Heat, so I don't know if that Breloom slot is the best ch choice, you know, to have on the team in hindsight. Um, that Double Edge does pick up that damage, so that little bit of Thunderbolt earlier from Lectro's Rotom was very important to guarantee that KO. So I really like that play he made earlier, planning out for this late game. Bowman switched out the Landorus to bring it back in now to intimidate the now physical, obviously physical Mega Salamence. Um, but is it, I mean, is it going to be enough? What, what, what does Electro have in the back right now still? He still has his, uh, he still has his Landorus T, but it's very, very hurt. So um, we're going to see this Rotom Heat actually has a lot of potential to do a lot of work here if he can keep it from getting flinched or you know, if he can get an Intimidate on Bowman's Landorus itself. Uh, definitely. We still don't know the item on that Heat Rotom. If it is Safety Goggles, that'll help against this Breloom matchup, really. Uh, you're right, Breloom's tend to carry Focus Ashes, and that can be annoying because you, know, you have to double into it, otherwise something's probably going to get put to sleep. Uh, we do see Salmon switch out right here, going to go straight now into the Landorusarian, going to go for an Intimidate onto the Breloom and that Landorusarian, so that is actually very good Intimidate to use up. Uh, not going to be very important for that Thunderous in back later, and we do know that this Landorusarian is not Scarfed. Uh, we see the Breloom go straight for the Mach Punch onto the Heat Rotom as uh, Landorusarian on Jake's side goes for the Rock Slide here after Intimidate. I don't think it will knock out that Landorusarian. I think it... Yeah, it missed. Yeah, it missed, okay. And we do see Heat Rotom okay. flinch, so that's unfortunate. Oh, man. Oh, man. So, like I was saying, he wanted to switch in that Intimidate to try to protect this Rotom as much as possible. Electro doing a great job realizing that this Rotom could really take home a lot of this game for him. Uh, another untimely flinch. A little little unfortunate. What's What I'm curious about is that Mach Punch over there. Um, was the Breloom... Is it potentially not sashed? Is that possible? I mean, everyone sashes it, though, right? That, that, that's pretty much the standard, but... Unless he's suspecting safety goggles, you know, uh, a spore there might not have been a bad idea. I mean, if you think of that Rotom being asleep right now, uh, Bowman would almost have the game barring, you know, getting flinched back like three, three turns in a row. So I'm not sure. Maybe he suspects the goggles because that's a very interesting, interesting move, especially if he had the sash. You know, you'd take whatever Salamence was going to throw at you and then you'd be able to spit it back out. Yeah, and we do see Landers Aaron go for the rock side right here. Landers hangs on. Rotom also hangs on. Uh, Rotom now going to go for the bolt seed, targeting down that Landers there and going to be able to pick up the knockout right there. Definitely afraid to spore into that safety goggles, possibly, as we see Rotom go straight for the overheat. Where is it going to go? Going to target down that Breloom. Going to bring it down all the way to Sash. If it does have the Sash, does have the Sash, and that hangs on. So now it's going to be Salamence uh, and Heat Rotom at minus two versus... Landers Therian, Breloom, and a heavily damaged Thunderous Incarnate in the back. One-on-one, uh, -on -one, Rotom Heat will be able to take on that Thunderous, I think, if it was at full health. But unfortunately, this Rotom right now on the verge of getting knocked out, really. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but did that Breloom outspeed the Landorus on Lead? It did. did. It did. Did that just happen? Wow. Wow. Could be an Assault Vest variant. Could be an Assault Vest yeah. variant. Uh, yeah, it did. It did. <laughs> Yeah, it's got to be that or like Yachi or something because, oh my god, 
Um, it can't. It's not like the Breloom scarfed because we saw it switch moves. So that's pretty. Okay. Wow. That's gonna be that's gonna be pretty essential information going into the the next couple matches here. Um, it is gonna be a two on three, but like you said, the Thunderous is pretty hurt. That Lander is at full health, spewing super effective rock slides here. It's gonna be pretty hard to get around, and I suspect that Bowman's Landorus is indeed scarfed. So it's gonna Electro in a little bit of a pinch here. Right. I just, I mean, if you think about it turn by turn, Salamence is pretty much going to be the one that has to try to knock things out. A Mach Punch and a Rock Slide is going to be able to knock out that Heat Rotom. And Salamence has pretty much a couple turns to knock out three Pokemon. Uh, at one point, you know, it's going to be either Breloom. Oh, okay, Rotom protects itself this turn. That is a move that I did not see. And that's why I'm not playing in this tournament. Uh, we see Landorusarian go for the Rock Slide here. Going to do a little bit of damage to that Salamence. Salamence does hang on. Goes for the double edge here. Where's it going to go? Has to go for that. Landers Therian does not pick up the knockout. And the recoil brings Salamence all the way back down into the red as Breloom goes for the Spore onto the Mega Salamence. So that should seal the deal, really. Oh, man. I mean, you, you see that Protect there. You want to try to keep Rock Slide, you know, spread damage as long as possible. Uh, but I, I'm sure he was hoping for that double edge to get the KO. If it did... If he got the KO and, you know, Breloom fired off another Mach Punch into the Rotom, I think Electro saw, you know, maybe I have a way out, uh, but it's looking pretty grim right now. Yeah, there it is. And we do see the forfeit from Juan's side. Uh, now both players are going to go back to the drawing board. I mean, first off, let me say that both players played admirably. Uh, uh, Electro had a little bit of unlucky flinches right there. Uh, Bowman, you know, I mean, he played spectacularly as well, so... Both players right now have to go back to the drawing board. I mean, what do you think right now, Alex, do these players have to do to, you know, what does Jake have to do to maintain his momentum going into game two? And what does Juan have to do in order to, you know, try to try to take this game two away from Jake? Okay, I think I think Jake or Bowman here, um, that, that Thunderous did so much work. It's it's going to come back for sure. Um, I can't imagine him not bringing Kangaskhan or Landorus again. The Breloom slot, it might be switched around. Honestly, does he need it to be? Sash Breloom is such a threat, even if it's, you know, being super affected by everything on the field, as we saw. So, I mean, it's also his safe spore switch in. I, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he just runs the same four. Uh, I, I really do. He might not lead the Thunderous <clears throat> just because I'm sure he knows that Electro knows that that Thunderous did so much work to his team. He may try to save it in the back here. But even if he does put it in the back, like, I, I don't know. I think what I liked Electro doing, I liked the way he was running into that Intimidate over and over again. The double Intimidate's really strong against Bowman's team, especially without a competitive user or a Defiant user. But, uh, you know, having three things that don't want to deal with Thunderous, it's kind of terrifying, especially when your Landorus is slower than the Thunderous. I mean, it's got to be running Yachi or Assault Vest. It has to, right? I mean, I can't believe he'd, he'd bring... Three things that are going to get one shot and two of them slower. I guess the Suicune won't get one shotted, but I mean, it's just taking so much damage from, you know, just just the Thunderous. He spent a lot of his resources trying to get rid of it. Uh, the Rotom Heat will definitely be back on Electro's side, though. It really, it really was the champion for him that game. I know it didn't pull through in the end, but he did get flinched twice, so that might have been the tide of the battle, to be honest. Right. Uh, <clears throat> Thunderous Incarnate, uh, probably one of the more popular Pokemon in this entire format. I mean, it's so good. Prankster, uh, Thunder Wave, Hidden Power Ice, uh, same type attack boost as Thunderbolts, you know. Um, I think the Breloom might make an appearance again just to check that Suicune, because, yep, yeah, there you go. Breloom does make an appearance. Going to put some pressure on that Suicune right away uh, as both players are now ready to go. Kangaskhan and Breloom out for Jake's side. Uh, Juan going to go ahead and lead Suicune and Lander Therian. Uh, yeah, I mean, what do you think about these leads? Uh, okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking if Bowman started that Thunderous <laughs> again, this would have been terrifying. Um, I'm liking the Intimidate. He got double Intimidate on the the Bish or on the the Breloom and the Kangaskhan again. He's doing a great job of trying to keep that Kangaskhan from going crazy. Uh, the fact that it is Power Up Punch Kangaskhan though really is helping Bowman out to you know just just work around that Intimidate with you know a good prediction. He can really get out of being intimidated you know two three times. So um, I think that's a good play on his Kangaskhan instead of being low kick here. The Suicune, it shows back up. It didn't do a whole lot last game. He got the Ice Beam off. I mean, it is Citrus Berry. It does not want to deal with this Breloom. In fact, nothing here really wants to deal with this Breloom very well. Uh, Bowman's got that Fake Out like we saw. So, I, I mean, I think a lot of momentum here is in Bowman's favor again. 
and we do see the switch from Suicune into the heat room. Uh, the fact that that heat room was trying to switch in most likely signifies safety goggles, I think. But I don't want to be can... that guy that assumes it and gets blown up in his face when it's not. Uh, we see Kangaskhan <laughs> gonna go ahead and go mega and go straight for the fake out, gonna target down that uh, heat rotom, which used to be that, that the Suicune slot, and the Spore is most likely gonna target down that Landers right now. Uh, does go for the Spore, does target down the Landers, and Landers is now taking a quick cat nap. Honestly there, I mean, to be completely honest, pretty simple turn here for Bowman. He saw his Breloom outsped the Landers last, last game, uh, and that's like, you know, if you have something that has Spore and it's faster than something else on the field, you're just like, hey, here's a free turn, thanks, you know? Rotom switching in, yeah, it very well could be safety goggles. I think he was maybe hoping for the bullet seed, uh, but the lead, the leads, he was, he was behind. He was, Lectro was really behind just from the, the leads in this game. So I really props to Bowman for leading this Breloom, even though it seemed like it was almost dead weight last game. Not quite, but almost. But coming out here leading with it, um, it's put on so much terror. It, like, this thing is literally terrifying the whole field, unless the Rotom has the goggles, but it's going to get returned. It really is just going to get returned. So I don't know. I don't know what Lectro is going to do here. Uh, right, absolutely, and uh, it goes down to one of those things about best two out of three, you know, a lot of players, you know, they, they realize, hey, I won the first game, you know, do I really have to change that much, and this mode right now that Jake's running is completely different from the leads that he had in game one, I mean, Kangaskhan Thunderous, uh, switching it out to Kangaskhan and Breloom, you know, that's just so much more pressure with the sleep and stuff like that. Uh, we do see Breloom gonna go straight from the Mach Punch, gonna get some damage onto that Heat Rotom, and Kangaskhan goes for the return right here. Is it going to be enough to pick up the knockout on Heat Rotom? Heat Rotom hangs on. And we do see Landers Darren still taking that quick cat nap of his as Wash Rotom, or sorry, Heat Rotom, going to go for the Wolves right there onto the Kangaskhan. Uh, not really dealing too much with that Breloom, unfortunately. But uh, Breloom still hanging on there. Focus Sash still intact as well. Oh my gosh, what a huge turn. If this Rotom went down here, I wouldn't be surprised if that just resulted in the end of this match. That Rotom hanging on, I mean, okay, what does that tell us? Oh, it's majorly physically defensive. Like, holy gosh. He's not running the Citrus on it, right? We saw it on Suicune. I, 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 got, I would put money on it that it's, it's safety goggles right now. It's, it's almost got to be. Um, we're not, we don't see leftovers here either, so I can't really imagine what else it would be. But it holding on and getting off that Will-O-Wisp at least really is going to give Lectro a chance. As long as, as, long as his lander is freaking wakes up eventually like come on guy like it needs to wake up but if if that thing went down this game was going to be it was going to be a really really uphill climb so great that rotom still once again i think <coughs> i think it's mvp so far i'm really liking it uh but he hasn't done a whole lot of damage back you gotta you gotta realize that he's still kind of only gotten a burn on the kangaskhan so far so We'll see. He's still got, we still have the Sweet Coon in the back. Doesn't really want to deal with the Bray Loom. And I assume he's got the Salamence. So maybe getting out Salamence in a favorable position is, is Lectro's go to plan right now. I mean, right now, the way I see it, uh, you know, Lander Saren is free to Earthquake, really. Uh, break that Bray Loom Focus Sash, get a lot of damage on the Kangaskhan. I think actually getting Heat Rotom knocked out this turn would be very advantageous for him so that he could get in that Salamence. But I am wrong because Bray Loom just decides to switch out. Going to go into his Lander's Therian right now. Going to go for the Intimidate onto uh, Juan's Lander's Therian. Rotom Heat not going to mind that so much. As Kangaskhan just going to go ahead and rampage with the return. Going to pick up the knockout on the Heat Rhythm. And Juan finds himself in a hole pretty early down 3-4. to four. Uh, We do see... Oh man, unfortunate that Lander's Therian is going to continue to take that cat nap of his. Electro getting some bad rolls so far. I mean, um, just a little unfortunate. The switch in from Bowman, the land, his own Landorus T, he's, he was afraid of Electro's Landorus waking up and superpowering, so I think he's just trying to nerf it a little bit. Uh, what I thought was interesting was the fact that Electro decided to sack the Rotom. I think he's trying to set up a, a free switch in for the Salamence. He may not do it anymore because the Landorus came in, but yeah, he might go to Suicune right now because the Braylon went out, but I think he was doing that to try to get his Salamence in for free in the last turn's positioning, um, instead of trying to save it with like a Protect or something and trying to wait for his own Landorus to wake up. Right, and I think this is going to be the turn where Landorus Therian has to wake up, and Suicune out there is going to put a lot of pressure onto the Landorus Therian. Uh, going to go ahead right now, switch that Kangaskhan out, going to reset that Intimidate count uh, on t into uh, Thunderous Incarnate, as Lander is there and going to go for the U-turn right now, going to try to switch back and get some momentum back to, to Jake's side of the field. Um, 
Yeah, what's I mean, really important. Uh, what's really important there is he, Bowman ran the same floor, right? Every single thing besides the Kangaskhan was weak to Ice Beam. So his move there was to try to allow his Kangaskhan to take the Ice Beam as opposed to switching in any of his other guys. None of them want to take it. So he switched out to U-turn into the Kangaskhan took, you know, to take this potential Ice Beam, which it, you know, it did. But, um, so it's good, good play there. Yeah, Landers there now going to switch out with that U-turn. So good call right there from Juan to try to pick up, back up some momentum. Does get another Intimidate off onto the Kangaskhan here. Uh, so that burn, minus one Kangaskhan, not going to be doing too much work. As Suikun does go for the Tailwind, I like that move. Absolutely fantastic. Electro saw, look, there's a Landris on the field, it's scarfed. If I Ice Beam that slot, it's pretty obvious anything's going to take big damage. So my opponent's probably going to anticipate that. Let me switch out into my, you know, let me, let me go for the Tailwind and get momentum back on my side of the field and not allow Bowman to, you know, make a good switch and keep his own momentum. The Kang is kind of minus one and burned. Like, I mean, it's within the double edge range. The thing is, do you even need to double edge it right now? Probably not. He does have fake out. The Kangaskhan will have fake out this upcoming turn. Um, and there's that scary, scary Thunderous, which can, you know, HP ice. Uh, Electro's Salamence. So he's got to be careful about that. If he loses the Salamence, this game's uh, pretty much wrapped up because the Breloom can pretty much KO just about everything else. Uh, along with, you know, some of his friends. But, um, so that's going to be a huge threat. This one turn, he'll have the, the, the Thunder Wave ability. You know, even though Tailwind's up on Electro's side, Prankster Thunder Wave, really good way to stop that. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to come down to how much damage Electro is going to take from this Thunderous before he's able to get rid of it. Because the Kangaskhan's pretty much, it's, it's really not doing a whole lot. Right, and it does have that fake out. I mean, that's really the support that Kangaskhan can fight right now. Not so much offensive firepower unless it starts getting off those power-up punches, uh, you're right, though, that Thunder Wave from Thunderous Incarnate is going to be pretty scary. You know, it's going to negate pretty much that Tailwind that that uh, Juan desperately needed to set up, as we do see Salmon's going to switch out into the Land of Saiyan. So now Kangaskhan's even weaker at minus two, uh, possibly expecting a uh, Thunder Wave, or even just to take the Hidden Power Ice, possibly, as Suicune can try to pick up knockouts uh, here and there with its Ice Beam. Uh, ice Beam does go onto the Land of Saiyan. Going to activate the Six Bear, going to bring back to about 75% of its health. Uh, you know, pretty much, I mean, not that much was done to it this turn, essentially, as Kangaskhan goes straight for the return, not going to try to fake out anything at all, uh, doing a little bit of chip damage to that Suicune, that's a lot of, that's, that's, that was really just like, you know, hey, here's a little, little tap. Yeah, there was no yeah. damage there, oh, man. Uh, we do so, see the, we do see the Citrus Berry activate on Suicune, though, so good position right now still for, uh, for Juan's side. I think... Electro realizes this incarnate, Thunderous Incarnate, is the problem. He switched out to try to save the Salamence, yes, probably from a potential Thunder Wave, uh, which would have, you know, which would have been a pretty solid play. So I, I can see that counterplay really working out. Uh, Bowman's doing such a good job, though, of really reading into, reading into some of Electro's plays. He doubled into the Suicune. I mean, you saw how useless the Kangaskhan was there. Uh, Power Up Punch would have been probably a lot better. He might have expected the Kangaskhan to go down this turn, maybe. But, um, because, like, that return really just did just absolutely nothing. And it's now at minus two, and it's burned. If Electro, you know, if he wants to win, leaving Kangaskhan on this field and essentially making a two-on-one might be his best bet. We do see the switch from Kangaskhan into the Braylon right there. Uh, if Landris goes for a rock side, though, that's going to be breaking the, uh, that's going to be breaking that focus sash, which is going to be kind of important later on. Uh, Thunderous Incarnate goes for the Thunder Wave right now, going to target down that Suicune. Uh, Landers Arian goes for that rock side right here. Going to break that focus dash on the Braylon. That's the important part. And going to be able to bring uh, Thunders in range to get knocked out. But oh no, the paralysis. Oh my god. That turn was going to be so huge for Electro. Oh my god. if Because he breaks the sash. He puts Thunders into KO range for the Ice Beam. Um, I think what Bowman went for, he thought, okay, Suicune might switch back into the Salamence because he doesn't want to lose the Suicune. Um, so he's, he thought maybe the Salamence will come in to try to take the Thunderbolt. But... The fact that he fully parried there is, oh god, this makes everything so much harder. It really does. Oh god. Because if that thunder, if that ice beam come off, he, got, he gets rid of this, this problem thunderous, you know? The Kangaskhan's pretty much useless. He has an Intimidate in the back. The Sash is broken. He can outspeed it and he can KO it with, uh, you know, his own Salamence. And then what does is, what is Bowman still have in the back? Well, just, just the, just the Landorus, you know? And he'd still have the Suicune alive. So that turn was huge. We do see the switch right now from Thunderous into Kangaskhan. Going to try to preserve that Thunderous for later on in the battle. Uh, that's going to be huge. Uh, Landris Aaron continues to just go for the rock slides here. And Breloom does get off a spore. Going to target down that Landris Therian. One of the good things about being paralyzed, though, for Suicune, it cannot be put to sleep. 
but Suicune is just going to be paralyzed, and of course a Bullet Seed should be able to pick up a knockout. Uh, unfortunately, right there, that Suicune could not move. Uh, most likely going to try to target down that Breloom right there to knock it out. Gosh, it's just, I mean, this Suicune is not doing what it needs to do to get back into this game. Breloom making a great play here. You know, I mean, it's not faster anymore because of the Tailwind, but... You know, I, it was faster than the, the paralyzed Suicune for sure. So we thought, ah, I'll take the rock slide. I'll put it to sleep. No big deal. Um, Kangaskhan's still here. No longer at minus anything. It's still neutral, but it is the burn. So it's not going to be doing too much damage, albeit the Suicune's a sitting duck for the Breloom. Um, the, honestly, the Kangaskhan can just try to chip a little bit and then try to put everything into KO range for his own Intimidate in the back, which he still is saving for when Salamence comes back out. So it's, uh, it's not over per se, but... <laughs> These last couple turns, they have been potentially huge for Lecture to get back into this game. It just has not been rolling well. Not, not whatsoever. He could have used a flinch really, really badly this turn. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Juan did so much good work to try to get himself in position to take this game, and unfortunately, Jake is just trying to prevent that as much as possible. Definitely making it a lot more difficult on Juan's side than it really should be. Um, you know, Sleeping Landers, you got a paralyzed Suicune here. That's unfortunate. Uh, we do see the switch from Suicune back into the sound. It's going to go for another Intimidate here onto the Kangaskhan, onto the Breloom. Uh, most likely you're going to expect Breloom not to try to spore that slot, so that might be a pretty safe switch. Kangaskhan right now going to go for the return. Going to do a uh, good amount of damage. I'd say about 20-25% damage. As the Bullet Seed does target down that Salamence slot, Quadruple Resist at minus one. Uh, oh, we see it do a little bit of chip damage, you know, just... Not even Bullet Seed, really. It's like Airsoft Seed. Excellent, excellent switch. Absolutely the best possible scenario for Electro this turn, um, as far as what his options were, you know, available to him. This, the, the freaking cat won't wake up, and it's really, it's really not helping him. It's really not helping him right now. This should be, what, his last turn going into Tailwind, I think? I could be wrong. I wasn't counting per se exactly. Just kind of go with the feel. But I think he's got one more turn of Tailwind here, which means his normal Salamence should outspeed... Um, everything on the field. If it was Hyper Voice, we'd be in a lot better of a position, but it's, it's, I don't think it is. I don't think it's a mixed. Uh, we do see the switch from Kangaskhan into the Lander Therian. Uh, you're definitely right. That was a good switch right there. I'm not sure on Tailwind turns either. Uh, unfortunately, now the Salmons is going to be minus one, but he still has that pivot of being able to switch back in that Suicune to reset this minus one. Probably just going to try to do as much work as possible. I want to see the pick up with the knockout on that, uh, Breloom right now, that'd be huge. We do see the double edge going to target down that Breloom, going to be able to pick up the knockout right there. So, good call right there from uh, from Juan's side. Going to even the score at 3-3 three to three, uh, with a heavily burned... Yeah, with a heavily burned Kangaskhan and a heavily damaged uh, Thunderous Incarnate in back as well. So, uh, Juan trying to pick up this momentum right here. The only thing stopping him right now in between his uh, path to this game to victory is going to be that Scarf Landers there. And, uh, if there's a Rock Slide, there's definitely a way. Pretty great, you know, pretty pretty great turn there, actually, to be honest, because of, uh, he knew the Kangaskhan was pretty, relatively useless still, even though it did, it did like 25%. I mean, no reason to deal with it. Take out the Breloom, it's the threat. It's going to be faster than your Landorus, you know, outside of Tailwind, which we may or may not be in right now. I don't think we're out of Tailwind yet, but I'm not sure. Maybe when he sends in something, it'll say Tailwind end. But the Landorus is I still think not it already up. ended. <laughs> Okay, okay. The, the, the Landers is still not waking up, which is so big. So getting rid of the Lander, or getting rid of the, the Breloom so it doesn't outspeed his Landers again, huge. There's no more Intimidates in the back of Electro's team without him switching out, and I assume he's probably just going to want his, you know, Landers to wake up right now and do damage. Um, Bowman's own Landers, once again, last, remember last game, it, it cleaned up with the Rock Slides. It may, it may have the ability to do that again here. We're going to have to find out. Okay, decides to switch that Kangaskhan out immediately into that Thunderous Incarnate. Uh, either Jake's trying to play some prediction games right now, or that might have been a misclick to send in that Kangaskhan. Uh, we do see Landorus Arian from, from Juan's side switch back out into the Suicune, so maybe that is what Jake wanted to happen, as we see Salmon's going to go ahead and protect itself this turn. Probably going to try to save the uh, Intimidate from Landorus, Inca from Landorus Arian for at least one more, one more turn. Uh, we do see the Rock Slide target down that Suicune, going to do a good amount of damage, I'd say it's now at 30, 35%. So now it's getting, coming down to the waning turns of this, this battle, and it's so intense, though. I mean, it could go any way. Wow, yeah, no, okay, so switching out that Intimidate, he definitely is afraid of Bowman's own Landorus. That Landorus with the, the super effective Rock Slide, he's trying to keep 
um, his own Landris in the endgame. He, he may even be seeing a Landris versus Landris one-on-one endgame here. If they're able to clear out everything else, because both of the Landris are super healthy, he may want that Intimidate. Uh, if he does pick off, you know, the Thunderous right here, and he gets his Intimidate in, Bowman's own Landris is stuck in the rest of this game at minus one rock sliding. We do know Lectro's Landris is bulky, right? It's not running, it's not Scarf, so it's probably on the bulkier side. He probably thinks he can win the one-on-one, -on -one, but he's not going to switch it in here. Uh, we see the rock side going to bring both Pokemon down into the red. Uh, Salmon's now going to go for that double edge, going to target down that Thunderous Incarnate. Does pick up the knockout. That's going to be a huge, huge knockout as the big offensive threat from Thunderous Incarnate, who I don't really get to say that often because we usually see it in the support role, does get knocked out at the cost of Salamence's own uh, ability oh. to continue on the battle as Suicune's paralyzed again. Oh, Nothing no. is going left. Like, oh my god, if, if, this, if the Suicune attacks there, it gets off that Ice Beam. Oh my god, like this game, it, it's... Oh. It's it's so much better for you know it's it's pretty much wrapped up at that point you know but he just he's just not catching a break um that rock slide really going to work for Bowman that's for sure I mean that was the game that was the game right there uh, I do think like I said it's it's gonna come down to this one on one Landris versus Landris so preserving his own Landris to switch in for the intimidate later to win this one on one especially if he's a bulkier version um, unless he gets flinched two or three or four times or crit um, you know Electro will have that one on one I assume I assume. That's just being, you know, that being said, I, the way Bowman's been playing and the way he's been flinching, anything could happen. Honestly, anything. Yeah, uh, Kangaskhan does have some sort of uh, support right here with Fake Up, but decides not to. Just going to go straight for the offensive. We see Rockside miss that Suicune. A little bit of trade right here and there for the uh, Luck Factor, but uh, Return's going to go ahead and pick up the knockout anyways. A relatively safe call right there. And Landers there. Is it going to wake up? Is it going to wake up? does wake up. What's it going to go for? Oh, flinches and cannot move. Oh. But Kangaskhan does go down. Hey, it's still not over yet because, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, I think right now Juan has the advantage barring any sort of flinches because uh, he's not intimidated and he's a bulker variant too. Yeah, Landorus, look, Landorus comes in, sleeps three turns, and then gets flinched. Like, what? Oh my gosh. I think this is going to be... No, Landorus has already attacked with a U-turn, but going to go ahead and go for the rock side here. Uh... I'm going to target down that Landers Therian, and I think right now... Uh-oh. Uh, uh -oh. It's... I don't know. Like, I don't know. Even if being intimidated, it doesn't seem like... Oh, no, oh, no, God. the flinch. And the Landers faster Therian rock now slide is God. On, on, on Juan's side, you know, uh, a critical hit is going to be very important right here, or a miss. Uh, if Juan has anything left in his bag, oh, no. Oh, no, the <laughs> miss. Oh, um, <laughs> Oh, man, Lectro, you got some bad karma, dude. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Oh, you know, no. he played this. It's not 100% over, um, but I, he played it so well. I really think he played it very well. Both of them played it very well. Uh, but after, you know, everything that happened, I, I'm really... I'm, <laughs> oh, God, this was, this, was a much, this was a very good battle. I, I, it was so close. He brought it back down to the one-on-one. -on -one. Even I thought he was going to win the one-on-one, -on -one, but I guess all of that bulk came out of attack, and he's just not... Doing the damage, and if you're slow, man, you're going to get flinched. That's all there is to it. And unfortunate for Juan, uh, he is going to lose the series in two games. Uh, you know, not to, you know, he played an absolute great series. Uh, game two was definitely in his favor, and he did such a great adjustment right there. But uh, congratulations to Jake uh, Major Bowman on becoming the fourth Nugget Bridge Major Champion here uh congratulations jake and you know you've you're taking home pretty much three hundred dollars uh you know juan he's still taking home 150 dollars as well and of course they both get automatic invites to the nugget bridge invitation i mean that was such a great series uh i mean alex you know that was probably a very that was a very exciting game too i mean that 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 came down to that came down to the end that came down to the wire that came down to like the pretty much the last couple turns you know, oh gosh, it was played so well, and um, I think Bowman did a great job of just, he, he saw what worked on his team. He brought the same four twice, and uh, you know, I completely agree with it. I, after seeing how it worked the first time, he brought it again, and he switched up the order. He had a great first turn lead prediction. Like, it's just so great. That Breloom into the slower Landris and the Suicune, just, oh man, just not, not what Lectro wanted to see. Um, and he really just played, he played the switching game so well. You know, he, he, he mitigated his, you know, only having one Intimidator. He switched it in and out really well, I think. Um, the use of that U-turn, even though he had 
three Ice Week Pokemon, which is why Electro kept bringing, you know, the Suicune, so good on him. But, uh, I mean, it, remember the start of that second game? Electro basically lost a Pokemon and a half uh, for getting a burn on the Kangaskhan. So, I, I just think the positioning ended up being... He's just a little bit too far behind. I honestly thought the one-on-one -on -one with the Landorus he was going to be able to pick up, but uh, it just it just did not have the power, and it just got flinched. But I really, I thought that was really well played. I really did. One-on-one uh, -on -one without the flinch, I think uh, Juan would definitely pull that off. I mean, he played his cards right. I mean, you're right. The, the the leads in game two, those were, you know, that was an uphill battle coming in, and Juan fought back uh, valiantly to bring it so close and. You know, that just goes to show that both these players are great players. You know, I mean, to make it this far in a 1,327-player tournament, you know, that shows something about your skill, and we definitely saw that here. Uh, you know, Jake played amazingly. You know, he's only dropped one game in this entire top cut. Uh, Juan, you know, he came back. You know, I mean, if I was in those lead positions right there for in, in Juan's position in Game 2, I probably would have just clicked run. I mean, I was just, you know, amazed at how... He turned that around with his uh, strategic switching, his, his, you know, finding the opportunities to open up and make that move. You know, I mean, burning that Kangaskhan was huge. Getting that Heat Rotom knocked out so early was actually probably a more mo bigger momentum swing for him. And, you know, props to, props to him. You know, they're both going to be automatically entered into the Nugget Bridge Invitational. Uh, that's going to be an exciting tournament for you guys to, to, to look forward to later on in the summer. Uh, we're going to have, you know, a lot of Nugget Bridge's top players there. For, for for us to watch and, and hopefully commentate for you guys as well. Uh, Alex, do you have any closing words for these for these for these two players or for, and for the viewers out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, do realize that there were over four thousand three hundred best of three matches in this tournament, right? So I mean, these guys didn't get here by you can't luck your way all the way to this to this final. There's just no way. There's just that's just too many matches. So congratulations to actually both of them and. Uh, Everybody else who even made top cut, I think that's just that's, that's pretty huge. Like, that's a lot of wins, you know? So, just great for everyone. I wanted to point out, both teams had a Breloom. I don't know if that says anything to anyone, but that's something that stuck to me. Um, also, on top of that, the Kanga, Kangaskhan, Landorus, T combo, really strong. I personally use that all the time. I think it's really, really strong, and um, it really did a lot of work there for Bowman. Um, the Rotom Heat, yeah, I, I don't know if Bowman actually knew the Rotom Heat was safety goggles. I do suspect it is now, but he never sported into it ever, even once. So, uh, I, I don't know, maybe it's just a good, that was just a good predict, and I think that gave Bowman, uh, it kept him in the, I don't know, the momentum, in the, especially in the early games. But uh, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty well played. I, I really did. Yeah, I applaud both of them. Uh, like I've already said before, and, you know, Breloom is going to be a popular Pokemon, so look out for it. I mean, we see two of the top players here in the Nugget Bridge Major, you know, bring them. And, you know, uh, it was pretty important for Jake's success, I think, in, in this uh, best of three series. And, you know, that should be it from us, guys. Uh, Alex, do you have anything else you want to say? I think that's about it. I really, enjoy, I really just... Oh man, I would I would have loved to have seen the Togekiss come out, or maybe the Bishart from Electro, but I mean I think I think they honestly played um you know, I think they played just the way they needed to play. I really thought that could have gone to a third match too. But that that's it. I, I got that's all I got. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Don't worry, look forward to these two players in the Nugget Bridge Invitational coming on later in this summer. Uh that is gonna be it from us here from Nugget Bridge. I'd like to give a thank you to my friend uh, Alex Agloza for helping me commentate this battle. Uh, thank you so much, Alex. Follow him on Twitter. Uh, I don't know what your handle is, but you can plug it if you want. Okay. Surprise, surprise, at Alex Agloza. Follow him on Twitter. He's a cool guy. Uh, we've been friends for a couple years now. Uh, follow me on Twitter at NBDWEE. -E. Follow at Nugget Bridge for all your VGC needs. Thank you, guys. And this is Dwee out. Alex out. <laughs>